How do folks? Welcome back. This is a price action lesson on institutional order flow and smart money concepts and interbank price delivery. All right, so before we get into this, a lot of you new students may not be aware of this particular pattern. This is something I've been teaching for a very long time, and it is my market maker sell model. Now, the point of this discussion tonight is just to draw the strong contrast between what it is that I do and trade with versus things that come from the retail universe, specifically Wyckoff. So if you look at this specific fractal, this is a conceptual view of how a market pricing occurs from an original consolidation Reaccumulation, smart money reversal, low risk sell, redistribution, clearing the original consolidation. Okay, so all of this right here, this is an original idea that's mine. Okay, so a lot of you new folks probably are already probably getting sick and tired of hearing me say this is mine and this is mine. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because there's a lot of feedback I'm getting that you don't see through email. Uh, a lot of folks are making YouTube channels and videos stating nonsense and reteaching my concepts but renaming them and trying to use the protective umbrella of Wyckoff and we're going to show that my content is not Wyckoff. If you just look at this fractal here, this is not the markup and markdown phase of Wyckoff. Okay? There are specific elements in here that are not disclosed or talked about or even mentioned in Wyckoff theory. All right, so I'm going to take this idea, this premise Okay, and just kind of remember this image. Now you're welcome to screen capture this and put it in your notebook and print it out. Everyone knows about this because I've taught this even back when I was on Baby Pips. So it was in free tutorials. It's mentioned throughout the YouTube channel in various places. It's a hallmark to me. So there are elements that I'm going to cover in this lesson tonight that will help you eliminate the concern that you may have heard or read about whereas ICT namely me inner circle trader just teaches re Wyckoff renaming things uh, and like I said that's the number one premise to this video plus I'm going to give you some nuggets and things that helps you see things that are maybe not available to you when you look at price now but I teach these things in great detail many of them I teach in this YouTube channel for free so just know that if you spend time at this channel, you're going to learn things that aren't everywhere else. Now, they're starting to populate other YouTube channels and other websites because I'm training a lot. And when I say a lot, I, at the time of this recording, I have 59,000 students. They're formal students. So it goes without saying, with that level of student base, if something's as good as my stuff is, it's going to spread globally. And it is. It's, it's becoming viral everywhere. You know, smart money this, institutional trading that, you know, breakers, order blocks, all that stuff. It's based on the things that I've been teaching openly since 2010. Now, I've been training people since 1996. 1995, I started marketing myself and started building a, a subscriber base then. But I was teaching market maker concepts f officially in 1996. My trading began and learning really began when I was 16. My first account opened up in November of 1992, and I blew out the first trade. And you guys know that it was 50% of my original position was taken away, and I got scared and closed the account. Then I started again uh, more formally trading with new concepts and things that I learned from Larry Williams and started building up a little bit a better understanding of what it is I wanted to do and I got lucky in 1993 and had a long stretch of luck that just simply was all attributed to being in a market that was predisposed to go up and I just couldn't really understand short selling this lesson is going to help you understand how I learned to trust going short because it's in this fractal okay when I say fractal it's a pattern this 
point of where it starts, where it trades up to as its highest point, and then you see the move going lower. This entire move, this swing, it occurs on all time frames, and it's replicated on multiple time frames. So when you see this pattern, this could be an hourly chart where it takes maybe 10, 15 individual hourly candles to make this original consolidation. Then you have a few candles that go up and then it consolidates again. It may be, well, whatever this would have been, this would be approximately about half of that. Not that it has any merit on the underlying pattern, but the, the time frame that you're looking at, all this idea or, or theory is applicable to all time frames. And there's a reverse of this fractal, which is the market maker buy model. Now, what makes this a sell model? When markets are in consolidation, what's occurring is there's a buildup of sentiment. Now, the sentiment may not be strong enough at the time. So the algorithm that delivers price, and we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight too, it waits for enough of open interest in the marketplace. And once that open interest becomes obvious, it's usually on the opposite side. So you would see many times opportunities where traders would be expected to go short or there would be a lot of uh, expectation to go lower and the market would eventually run outside of that. And many times you'll see that this pattern really starts with the expectation that the market wants to go lower in the retail universe. In other words, the average retail trader will see this area in here and the price before it leading to some idea that would be bearish. And if they're bearish, their stops are going to be placed right above here. And the original run is to those individuals. So their buy stops are taken, but the market doesn't go there and then trade lower. It goes there and then consolidates and it allows traders to build up more sentiment. What this period right here is, it, it lulls in large fund traders. Now, large fund traders are the counterparty to the central banks on the trading end. In other words, there are global commerce, there's transactions that are facilitated through the foreign exchange market, but the speculative side, the counterparty that is provided for the large funds is the central banks themselves many times. So they'll offer that liquidity and assume the risk. That risk is being used as a position that will be later profitable because the central banks have a very deep pocket. They don't, they're not concerned about how far this is going to go because how far this rally is going to go up is predetermined. Now, again, that's unsettling when you hear that. It sounds like there's no way that this is like that, but it is. It absolutely is. And I can give you a plethora of proof and examples, and I call it before it happens. And so if it wasn't true, you have a greater problem in trying to explain how it is that I know what's going on. Because I can tell you right now, it's not Wyckoff. It's not supply and demand. It's not Elliott Wave. It's not harmonic patterns. Okay. I'm very controversial as an individual because I'm not going to sugarcoat anything, folks. I'm not going to sit here and hold your hand and pretend that all this retail stuff and indicators are going to help you. I'm going to tell you short and sweet that it is going to harm you and it's going to stunt your growth. If you have been using those things and you've been profitable, I can assure you, once you study my content, you're going to see really why those trades were profitable. It just so happens that those indicators were flashing that particular view at the time. But I don't have a whole lot of things moving around that would give me a, a, a view that would be opposing many times. And if I have opposing views in my analysis, that to me is uncertainty, and I'm going to sit on my hands and wait. I'm waiting for more information, more clarity, so the price will be able to reveal itself or tip its hand, so, so to speak, so that way I feel comfortable with the next trade I'm going to take. So in short, the idea is we want to anticipate a run from an original consolidation, which is over here. And once this starts to run up, your eye needs to go right below these lows because right below these lows, that's sell side liquidity. This sell side liquidity is going to be targeted later on, but it's for the central banks to be profitable. Okay, they're not going to give this opportunity you know, openly. They're not going to make it available in books, and it's not covered in Wyckoff. Okay, so uh, why am I so hard up on the 
Wyckoff group. Okay, because if you're a Wyckoff student and you've been trading and maybe you're profitable, this lesson actually might be a little bit more beneficial to you. If you're new and you're reading or hearing other people either directly or indirectly stating that I am reinventing, okay, Wyckoff, uh, you're going to be corrected tonight. Okay, and I'm doing that because we had this problem on baby pips years ago. People were saying, oh, well, he's strolling supply and demand zones. And it's not supply and demand zones, as you're going to see tonight also. It's a very specific criteria that leads to probabilities. And it's highly specific. It's not conjecture. It's not contrived. But it has to start from a premise that leads to the market in a consolidation that sends price higher. Because all this move right in here, this move from the original consolidation up to the smart money reversal, and what's a smart money reversal? That's a level that should offer strong selling or at least an intermediate term resistance. And this might be a retracement down that is part of a larger up move. So don't think that this is a, a topping formation in its entirety, because it's not. I use this pattern on both sides of the marketplace, and sometimes I've done it in the same day. It's not limited to that, but you do have to understand what you're doing with it. And just because you can see this and maybe find the example of it in my teachings or find an example in hindsight, it's not the same thing as you being able to see it, forecast it, and anticipate it, trade it both directions up, and then short it and go down. But the premise is this. You're taught... And you hear other people on YouTube and you hear other people on courses and such. They'll say the buying pressure that led to this move up here. They'll say smart money bought all this driving price up. As soon as you hear that, get out of there. Stop listening to those people because that's not how the markets work. Buying pressure is not what causes these runs higher. It's repricing. That's it. Now, I want you to think a little bit because you have to... Take your time with this lesson. You probably have to watch it a few times too, but if price is consolidating like this, and I promise we're going to go to a real price chart in a moment, but if markets are in a consolidation and you, we, we can look at the market as a potential short-term bullishness that leads to a sell later on. Now, there's two camps in this environment. One that will say, okay, I'm going to be a buyer and it's going to go up to that level, and that's their trade. Completely and utterly done with the market after that other traders can sit here and say okay i don't know if it's going to go up to that level here but if it does i want to sell short and their trade would be shorting here down to this level here now when you understand how the market delivers and books price you can work from this level here to here and then from here to here and then here 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 to here here to here that's a dynamic market efficient trader. I mean, they know what they're doing. That's going to take decades to get like that. And that's why I say, when you see examples of me trading both sides of the range, buying long and going short in the same day multiple times, you need to know a lot of stuff. And I have not revealed those things, not in mentorship or anything. And you don't need to trade that way. You only need to understand one piece of this overall fractal pattern. In other words, it might be from here to here. And the idea of this area here breaking down, that would be a stop out. So you would hold a trade until it eventually stops you out. And that's how you catch a big runner. You don't try to capture the top because you don't know where that may be in your analysis, at your level of understanding. So the idea would be to buy here and use this area here. If you get to that point, get stopped out, and that would be your trade. So there's lots of different ways to use this fractal, and many of them I haven't even taught yet. But the general principle is... You start with consolidation, it's going to go up to a specific point that leads to selling, and it goes lower. But I really want you to understand that it's not buying pressure, okay? It's not buyers that leads the price to go up to this level. It's repricing. Because as soon as the central bank stops offering the price at these levels and then starts repricing lower, that controls the sentiment of traders. They are not out there saying okay x amount of buyers have been buying it up and it's pushed it this far 
It doesn't work that way, folks. As much as the books say, as much as these well-meaning gurus and educators out there want to tell you this, and they may subscribe to this wholeheartedly, that's how the markets go. It's buying and selling pressure. It's supply and demand. That's how these things happen. It's not how it works, okay? It's not how it's work. It's it's not how it works. I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, and I sound like an arrogant jerk, okay? But if you've been watching this stuff, Okay, and okay, I'm not in here as someone just read 2,000 books and I figure I'm a professional because of that. I have had people instill in me information that you're never going to see, ever. It's never going to happen. When you get exposed to something like that, it changes you. It changes your perception of the marketplace. It changes your, well, my patience with retail ideas. Or it's next to nothing. I don't have any patience with it whatsoever. And when I see people try to hide their real intentions, because what they're doing is they're teaching my concepts, but they're trying to call it something else. So that way, number one, they think they're going to avoid legal trouble with me. Two, they avoid all the uh, the drama that my te- my teachings are found in their works, but renamed. So my students will find them, or I'll find them on YouTube, because sometimes their videos get suggested because I'm predominantly looking at market related things on YouTube. So I'll get videos suggested to me and I'm like, wait, what? And I'll look at it. And that's something I just talked about yesterday. So now they have it in their video. Okay. So when I see that stuff, it's very offensive. I'm not like, I don't look at this as, yeah, everybody wants to be like me and I feel like that's a cool thing. That's not what I want you to do. I want you to be an independent thinker. And if you've learned something from me, Hey, great, credit me. But don't try to reteach my stuff and don't try to make courses with my stuff because I come after people with that. And it's just, I got plenty of time and money to do it and people working behind me to to, you do those types of things for me. But I don't want that to happen. That's not what I want. And besides, you're never going to be a good trader if you're doing that. You're just pretending. You're being a copycatter. And copycatting is limited in what you can earn. Most of the people that are doing it can't trade. And it's mostly the IML people iMarkets Live, uh, IM Academy. Uh, I've thrown so many of those individuals out of my course and my mentorship. And you can clearly see if you've ever looked at any of their stuff, they'll talk about fair value gaps, which we'll talk about tonight, uh, breakers, mitigation blocks. And 99% of the time, they're classifying the chart in the element that they're trying to draw um, a parallel to to my content. It's wrong. And that's why their analysis fails. And I don't really go after the individuals that have their videos on YouTube that have fair value gaps mentioned, order blocks, and they call them institutional candles, but it, it's nonsense. Uh, there is no institutional candle, okay? There is no institutional gaps, okay? There is no institutional um, uh, candlesticks, okay? Or sniper candles, okay? All they've done was just simply change the, tam- the name of an order block. And 99% of the time, they're classifying it wrong. And if you just watch their videos, everything they talk about that is a future idea, it fails, so it kind of tells you they don't know what you're talking about. You can put all the, the buzzwords and tags on your chart to draw attention to yourself. And it sounds like you're institutionally minded, but you're not, you're not making, number one, proof that you know what you're doing. In, in fact, you're showing the opposite. Two, you're harming the viewers that are giving you their time and energy and effort to try to pick up on what you're trying to teach, but you don't know how to do it. So again, I've mentioned this in the last video, and it probably won't be the last time I do it, but I really want you to think about it. If you're operating a YouTube channel, okay, and you're doing things like renaming my things, look around. I'm having YouTube take those videos down, and it only takes me to do one time, and they take it down. They know my stuff. They've seen the documentation. It's my content. It's my copyright. It's my thing. So don't waste your time. And don't take my videos and dub your native language over top of them because I had them think I have whole channels taken down that, that do that. Okay, so again, I'm not here to try to be a irritant. I'm here giving you my time and my energy because I love doing this. I absolutely love doing it. It's my entire life. I've been doing this more than anything else since I've been alive. And I like to believe that God's blessed me with an ability that I had made a promise to him. If he would bless me and give me the understanding to know how to do this, I would spend the rest of my life 
teaching other people how to do it. And I have been doing that. And I don't think that most people understand that promise because they look at it as opportunity. Well, he's got something that works really good and it defies all logic in retail universe trading, period. It's nothing like what I do. There's absolutely nothing. You were some why is because it's the absolute market. It is the market. So when I say I'm teaching market maker concepts, I'm not teaching willy nilly patterns. Okay. I'm not teaching some garbage. I'm teaching how the markets turn on a dime to the point or to the pip at a specific time of day, a specific day of the week. Okay. I can do this every single day. The point is you don't need to be that good at it. You only need to know one specific element about the marketplace that you're looking at. And then that one specific criteria, you repeat it over and over again. And then you add money management to that. So you're repeating something that is have basically a, a result that's expected. And then if you have an, a result that's expected that repeats more times than it fails, because it's not, it's not perfection you're aiming for. In the beginning as a new trader, you're thinking you want perfection. It doesn't exist. I lose too. Even with the best of setups, I think it may be lined up from an interbank level. I still can get it wrong because the human in me may spend more time looking at something that has less significance at the time. And usually that's at major tops and bottoms. Okay, I That's where I fail if I were classify a specific time frame when I'm trading. Uh, majority of the time, if I'm losing money, it's in areas where I'm trying to predict the direction that this move occurs. So I've learned over the 27 years I've been trading this is to wait for that move to come out. And I'm not a, ba a breakout trader. I'm just waiting for that move to occur. And then the imbalance that's created in here, okay, it'll either be a fair value gap, which we'll introduce tonight. It's been shared in my mentorship and trust me there is so much more to it than just looking at what i'm going to show you tonight or there may be an order block in here or it may be a stop run so there's three elements in here that are going to be a factor not all of them exist at the same time so the question always is is what do you look for do you look for a order block do you look for a fair value gap or do you look for stops it depends on the structure of the marketplace from that period where it leaves the consolidation and it'll make more sense when we go into the live charts but just well not live chart because the markets are closed now it's after uh, week close on Friday, but we'll look at real charts. But once it gets in here, then I'm comfortable and I know that this is likely to go where I think it's going to go. And then I can be a buyer in here and ride up to this area and then go short and reverse here or here, depending upon how strong of a, a an opinion I have on the marketplace. If it's a bullish market, now if you're not writing notes down, folks, I'm telling you, you're really wasting your time because if you Listen to what I'm saying. I'm giving you things that I used to charge people $20,000. Now, I'll say that again. $20,000, okay, to learn these types of things. And again, I put this bounty out before. I did it on baby pips, okay? And I'm going to do it right here because now it's on YouTube. And there's a larger audience watching. I will pay 100000 US dollars to anyone that can find my concepts anywhere in print prior to 1996. Now I'll say that again. The way I train and teach the marketplace and how the interbank market prices, if you can find it anywhere prior to 1996, I will pay you 100,000 US dollars, period. End of story, done. And it will still be in my bank account 20 years from now because there isn't going to be anyone that can find it. I'm the author of this stuff. So when I say I authored it, I authored it. I have been paid by firms, bankers, traders, brokers, all of these individuals I have consulted, period. They're not going to come to me if they can find this stuff in Wyckoff books. <laughs> okay. I mean, I hate to say I'm that snide, but that's the way it is, folks. If you don't want to believe that, just believe me on the sake that I can do these things and I can tell you exactly what's going to happen before it happens and it goes to the pip over and over and over again. It's as simple as that. I don't need you to believe my words. I just need you to go in and investigate it with your own practice. And that alone will be the testimony you need because you will see that it's the truth. That's what I'm telling everybody, every single person that comes to this YouTube channel. 
There's never been anyone that's completed every single video and said, you know, I've watched all your videos and I really wish I would have never done it. They all send me the same, if they're going to send me anything at all, they send me the same type of response. Wow, I cannot believe you put this on YouTube for free. This is better than any course, anything out there. And I agree. And I just tell them, keep me, keep me up to date with your training and, and let me know how you got. So I know this stuff is the best. It is the absolute best, folks. You're going to be out there listening to these 20-year-olds parroting what I've said in old videos, okay? And they cannot prove they can do it. And they want to get you into these schemes where you into this multi-level crap, and you're never really learning how to trade. They can demonstrate my toys and my inventions on the left side of the chart, but they will never be able to do it live. They cannot do it. They won't do it because they don't know how to do it. They make money from subscriptions. And let me tell you something. I could sign on to my PayPal right now, okay, and show you $165,000 came into my PayPal today. Now think about that. Do you still see me with that money coming in? Do you ever see me posting my cars, my homes, my watches? You've seen some pictures and such of my cologne collection because I wanted to be different <laughs> but none of those other things you've never seen and if you didn't believe I had money prior to me doing a mentorship I really have it now so why am I not showing all these things because that's not going to make you a better trader it's not going to make you someone that is objective about the marketplace and I'm not trying to sell that lifestyle I don't particularly care what anybody's opinion about, about me personally is about whether or not I should show my toys I just don't think I should do that. I did those types of things when I was a younger man. I'm about to turn 50 in two years. So I may sound like a young guy because of my voice being what it is. But I'm actually a middle-aged man. And I just don't live life like that. So I try to be as modest as I possibly can in the areas I feel that it's important. But when it's authorship and things that I know that I have created... And I see other people trying to take credit for it or to try to hide them stealing the idea and intellectual concepts and plagiarism is really bad in, in this industry. And most people would say, well, if you're, if you're so successful, you wouldn't care about this. Well, no, that's not true because I want you to understand this and then we're going to go into the heart of the teaching. I don't want people to look at me and worship me. That's not what this is. So if you're a new subscriber, if you're a new viewer, Okay, and you just stumble over top of this channel or someone shared a video and said, hey, let me, you know, let me start looking at some of these videos and you're watching this one now. I need you to understand this point. And again, this won't be the last time you hear about it either. I had a hard time in the beginning. It wasn't easy for me. And I didn't come from money. But I've always believed in a God. Uh, I've always believed that the Creator didn't just make us and just walk away from us. So I actively prayed for this skill set. And I believe he answered it. And I, I worked really hard. And it wasn't hard work that got me here. Because I did a lot of hard work looking at the wrong things. And some twist of circumstances. We'll just say it that way. I fell into an opportunity that still baffles me today. But because of that, I understand things that you wouldn't know otherwise. And there's maybe people that's been trading longer than me, and they have been profitable. And they'll hear this video and say, this guy's full of crap. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't know what you subscribe to as a theory on trading, but I've done just about all of it. And nothing is truer than what I teach. Nothing. And you get to test drive it for free here on YouTube. So when I see other people try to take credit or rename something because they want glory and they want fast buck and they want to live like the kids over there on Instagram that can't trade, this idea of doing that isn't robbing me. It's robbing God. Because when people find me, I don't say, this is mine, this is mine, worship me, I'm the best trader on the planet. I don't say that. Okay, I've said things like that in the past, but I want the viewer to understand the reason why I'm hung up on this is because when everybody follows me, they are going to hear me credit who it came from. 
And I prayed for this. And I worked very, very hard. And working hard didn't get me there. But when he opened my eyes to certain things, I, he caught my attention. Let's put it that way. And then I said, look, if you make this available to me, I will give you my entire life to help other people. And I don't need to put this YouTube channel on here. It's, it's been sitting here for years. And these videos are better than any course out there. Zero. Nothing can come close to this. Nothing. I mean, there's some pretty decent people out there that have well-meaning intentions to try to train people. Even that. It all pales in comparison. There's a lot of people in this industry also that, because of privacy, I'm not going to rename and say, hey, you know, who, who's in your course? Who's in this? Who's trained under you? Um, but you'd be surprised. You would be very surprised to see who trained with me. So it's not an image thing with me. It's a giving glory to where it's justly deserved. Yes, I worked very hard, but it wasn't until God gave me his grace to see these things because they were always in the charts. They were always there, but no one ferreted it out. Over 2,000 books. And anything that came out new, I owned it and I bought it, period. It was a course, I bought it. From futures contract trading to options trading to currency trading, bond trading, stock trading, you name it. I have a library that's deep with all those things. And none of this exists. And I have Wyckoff books. And again, Wyckoff was a theory of retail thinking that I made fun of and I trolled an individual on America Online. His name was Dean. And if I could meet him today, I would apologize to him because I was a really an arrogant jerk back, back then. You think I'm arrogant now, but I really, really was an arrogant jerk on America Online. I was the definition of new money. You know, I had money coming in my hands because I was making long trades in markets that were going to go up anyway. And I thought I was smart. And <laughs> it was nothing. It was a simple 50-day moving average, buying... Uh, Oversold bullish divergence, uh, hidden divergence, or trend following in nature, which was invented by Nick Van Nice. Um, nobody gives him credit to this, to this day still, but he's the one that created that hidden divergence or type 2 divergence. And, or standard bullish divergence on a 60-minute chart. And that was it. That's, that's all I used. And I parlayed that up to $832,000. So people watched me do things like that on America Online. And I... Because I was getting popular, and I saw somebody else starting another area of uh, teaching, and it was Wyckoff. His name was Dean, and uh, he seemed like a really nice guy, but I didn't like the descriptions that he used, like, you know, break the ice or jump the creek or something like that. And if you studied Wyckoff, you probably know what I'm talking about, but those terms just didn't jive with me. And what was my problem? My problem was I was a Team Larry Williams guy. Okay, and this is the number one reason why I've taught for years not to have a team mentality. You don't need to defend me. Okay, if I'm your mentor, you don't ever have to go on the internet and defend me. I don't care. Okay, no one's changing my lifestyle because they don't like me or they think I'm a fraud or they think I'm fake or they think I did this or that. I have all kinds of stories and things that people been sharing about me to looking at my cousin's pair of pants and thinking that's me in a picture. I mean, it's, it's nonsense. <laughs> it's nonsense. But all these things. Okay, about Larry Williams' concepts. I was subscribed 120% to everything he said. If Larry Williams said it, then it's the gospel. And because the things that he talked about, commercials, commitment of traders, I could see it in hindsight. And I was like, that's it. That's the thing I'm looking for. So I was defending Larry Williams without any real need to defend Larry Williams. I mean, Larry Williams still has the, the leaderboard uh, record. 11,000% gain from 1987's uh, World Cup champion. So what do I need to defend him for? But because I was a young man and I was watching someone else get a crowd, I was thinking to myself, this is nonsense. This doesn't make any sense. And I started looking at what he was doing and I would sit in his, his little teachings and things that he would do. And I was like, okay, th this doesn't make any sense to me. None whatsoever. So I would sit in the room, in the chat room on America Online, and troll him. That's all I would do. And what I was doing was, I was masking my confusion 
because I was seeing things that I didn't understand, and I was looking for you know things that I was learning from Larry Williams, and it just it was a waste of time looking back at it. And there's a lot of you individuals that are here listening to this video, and you're the ones that put the thumbs down like that's hurting my feelings. It doesn't make a difference to me what you do, but either you're an IML guy, or you're a, a rig packager, or you're somebody that just loves putting the thumbs down. I don't care. I want you to understand. I don't care. I don't care what you think. The individuals that are here, you're going to get what you're looking for. If you put the time into studying the things I'm giving you, you're going to find that thing that you've been unaware that exists. And when you see it, you can't unsee it. You're not beating the market maker here. Okay, uh, I've had so many people point to other people out there that have created courses and sold them for $5,000 and such and such and such. You never see these people trade. You never see them execute. And they're always entering after the move starts. And I don't do that. I'm buying when it's going down and I'm selling short when it's going up. And I'm exiting when the markets are moving in my favor, not when it retraces, unless it stops me out. Here, you're going to learn to trade in line with the market maker because the market maker is not the dealer. Okay, They are not the dealer. They are the central bank, the storehouse, the, the commodity producer or holder. And if we're looking at the Japanese yen, it's the Bank of Japan. If we're looking at the Australian dollar, it's the Bank of Australia. If we're looking at the dollar, we're looking at the Federal Reserve. All of these banks run with the same algorithm. All of them. They all run on the same algorithm. The things that make them gyrate and move around, it's not buying and selling pressure. It's not. Okay? So... With that idea, let's go into a price chart. Never thought we'd get here, huh? All right, so here we are. We are looking at a price chart of the euro dollar. Okay, and this happens to be a 90-minute chart, and it's nothing special about 90 minutes. I just use 90 minutes because it makes it very clear to have the candles about the size they are and still have this much information. So I sent a post to the YouTube channel, and if you haven't been following along on the community tab, if you go to the Inner Circle Trader YouTube channel, and you click on the community tab again this is where I've been using my way of reaching out to everyone now my mentorship group they get prompted about a video being posted in that and any other insights or anything on my mind uh, I, I created this as a medium to be able to reach out to all of you so if there's something on my mind that I'm trying to convey or share or a heads up about a video maybe coming uh, it's all here so I, I sent this, and I, I said, look, go here and look at this and study this fractal. Okay, all this price action in here. And that's going to be the scope of this discussion tonight. So we're looking at it here, and hopefully you've done a little bit of homework. If you haven't already studied it on your own and looked for certain things in, the, in this price action, stop the video right now. Just remember where you are right now in the minute marker. Stop it, and then study this. And then once you have exhausted that, time and effort come back to the video and then watch it from there otherwise you've been wasting your time and you're, you're going to waste the opportunity that would i guess present the best learning opportunity for this teaching all right so when you look at price action like this many times if you're new it just doesn't look like it makes any sense whatsoever but i'm going to walk you through this and my mentorship students they know that most of the things i'm going to show you here uh, they were already made available to them in advance. But we're going to look at the annotations here, and let's maximize this. Get a little bit more. There we are. So this is the price action for this week in the euro dollar. And you can see that we've had this old high. Price ran above that and collapsed and traded lower. I want to kind of like walk through a market maker sell model. Okay. And then once I show this, I'm going to show you in contrast what Wyckoff teaches. Okay. And I'm not going to go into great detail, but understand this. If you are one of those individuals, okay, that feels because you've watched another YouTube channel or you've watched someone tweet or if you watch someone on Instagram or if you've been in another medium somewhere and they said ICT is just Wyckoff or supply and demand. I have teachings that literally go through and dissect the stark contrast between the two. 
Okay, and this is going to be one of those examples here. When I look at price action and how I teach my students, uh, we're looking for what is called a low resistance liquidity run. Okay, and a low resistance liquidity run is the absolute easiest types of trades that you can take. There are also a high resistance liquidity run. Now, a high resistance liquidity run still has the potential to unfold as a low resistance liquidity run, but generally, low resistance liquidity runs get there quicker and less resistance, hence the name low resistance. It doesn't mean that you're going to have multiple layers of resistance to hit. Okay, it just means that it has a lot of resistance in the terms of time. The amount of time that's required for it to cross from where the inception of the move begins and then where it reaches its target. Low resistance is very quick, very sudden moves like this. This would be a low resistance liquidity run, whereas this is a high resistance liquidity run. Now, I'm not going to get in here and explain the facets that make them, okay, because that's mentorship, but I'm already going to give you more here than I have ever shown in YouTube. And this is just scratching the surface. But everything I'm showing you here was talked about before it ever happened. So I want you, <laughs> I want you to understand that. And I'm going to prove it. Okay, I'm going to go over to the, uh, my website and click in and show you where I was talking about the market going to this very level right here. Okay. So it's not a contrivance on my part to, to build this as an example saying, ha ha, look at me, hindsight, I'm smart. I really want you to understand that you have no reason to buy into these ideas that I am reinventing, rehashing, renaming, or trying to take the credit from somebody from the 1900s, okay, Richard Wyckoff. I want you, if you doubt me, study it. Go into Wyckoff, read whatever you can, okay? And then go back into my YouTube channel and you try to find any similarity whatsoever with that. It's the same thing that's happened when people started seeing me teaching. And they said, oh yeah, you're teaching uh, what Chris Laurie teaches. Because I use a term, liquidity void, that really picked up, because there's a lot of students that were on baby pips. And when I talked about an imbalance, they were like, oh yeah, that's a liquidity void. And I was like, okay, well, if that's what you're familiar with, then we'll call it that. But they're actually price vacuums. And they existed before me. But a fair value gap is a very specific element, and you probably see that right here in the chart. The idea of price moving up from here to here, if you asked everyone in the trading universe, they would say this was all buying pressure, when it's not. Over here, this old high here, there's buy side liquidity resting above that. That means there's buyers that want to buy if it goes above that or stop out at a loss for anyone that's going short. So that's what I mean when I say buy side liquidity. When you see that above an old high or a specific level like over here, these relative equal highs in here, relative equal highs, you don't hear that anywhere else except for the people that's copying off me now, IML and IM Academy and iMarkets Live, all those people, yeah. Frauds is what they are. So you have buy side liquidity. Again, buy stops that will be resting above that. Buy side liquidity resting above that. So when price is starting down here and starts to rally up, when it's going up like that, What's actually occurring is the central banks are offering price higher. Now, the buying that comes in the marketplace is forced, if they're going to buy, to buy at that price that's being offered. And as it gets filled, the central bank prices again. So there's a mechanism that causes price to start spooling. That means it starts spreading higher and higher or going lower, but it's basically gapping up. Every time a new transaction occurs, they're forced to buy at that price. So it's not, now it's very, you may be thinking I'm arguing semantics here, but I want you to really think about what I'm saying. From this point here to above this high up in here, for the market to get to this price point, the central bank will keep offering a price higher and higher and higher. And when it consolidates, it only goes down to a specific price level, which is again, a fair value gap or an institutional order flow entry drill which I'm not going to go into detail, but these are all my observations and creations, and I brought that to light. I gave that to the trading community. And it's highly, highly precise, and it's one-sided. So you have to have a narrative understood for it to work. Otherwise, you're going to lose. And that's the reason why these 20-year-olds can't do it, because they don't know it. They just watch some videos they got on the sly, 
and they think they understand it because they watched it. It doesn't work that way. It, it, it's not a magic trick where you watch the sleight of hand and then do it one time and then you understand it. It's not riding a bike either. It takes effort and you have to have more learning behind it. But this displacement that takes place above this high here, that's because of the central bank offering price continuously higher. The buying, they don't offer it lower. So you're told, oh, it's the buying pressure that takes up there. No, it's the selling that's being offered at repricing. This is all a repricing model. Okay, all of this right here is a repricing. It's repricing above this high because they want that liquidity out. Why do they want this liquidity taken out? They want to purge the liquidity. All this area here, when it runs above that, all the buy stops get hammered. If it's right above here, they're going to get hit it. If it's up here in layered fashion, okay, that means that they're going to see it send price higher to make sure all of the buy side liquidity is taken out. And they really, really ramp it up here. If you watch that community tab on my YouTube channel, I actually sent a, a post right when it was trading here. I said, all right, pay the trader. Now, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that that's time to hit the ramps. You can take some money, get it off. My mentorship has been told that, that we were going to see this rally above. And we were talking back in March of 2020. And now here we are at the end of August, just about. And it finally hit this level and cleared it. If you look at August 6th, that's this high here. That's what this level is indicating. August 17th, this level right here, what's actually occurring? The market breaks down below the 17th low and trades right back up into that order block. So it's the low of the August 17th daily candle. So the market trades up into that level here and starts to cascade lower. This overall fractal pattern is that market maker sell model. This is the smart money reversal. This is the purging of liquidity that was drawing price up. All of these orders that were buy side liquidity, in other words, buy stops, think of it like that. Whether it's buying on a breakout or if it's buying a stop that would protect a short position. So if, whenever you put a short position on, you put a buy stop on to protect it. If it goes up to that price point, you get stopped out either at a loss or wherever you had a trailed uh, stop protecting open profits. In this case, these individuals above here are thinking that this was resistance. So they go short here and put their stop loss up here. They ran that out. So what's actually occurring is the central banks are repricing higher, keeps offering higher, higher, higher. You have no choice if you're gonna be a buyer or if you're in a short and you're getting squeezed, where are you buying? So in other words, if you're short here and they've been watching you go up, 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 up. If they wanna protect their stop loss, what's happening? They're gonna close their trade. How are you gonna close the trade? You have to buy it, you gotta buy it back. So what's happening is every time it goes up, any buying is forced to be buying at a higher price. Is it buying pressure? No. The central banks are repricing higher and you're stuck, stuck getting in this squeeze. That's called, it's just called a, a short squeeze. Okay, but that's not the logic in its purest sense. The purest sense is this was a long-term level that we've been eyeing since March of 2020. And if you look at a daily chart, just look for equal highs and you'll find them. But in here, the market rallies up through that and all that buy side liquidity becomes market orders to buy at the marketplace. So what is the algorithm doing? It's setting the tone for a flood of counterparties for smart money to go short. All those buyers that are willing to buy at a higher price than this high here, all of this is perfect opportunity for smart money to be going short. They're gonna get really good placement in their short positions. Then the market trades in here and hits the mean threshold of the 60 minute order block. I'll drop down to a 60 minute in a moment, but that's what the, all this level is here. Multiple opportunities to get in there. Short, 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 short. And this is a bull flag to retail traders, but it's a false flag, I teach that. And it breaks down back below the August 6th high. When the price breaks down like that, it creates a balanced price range. Now, remember all these terms because this is actually things that I teach in my mentorship. I'm not gonna go through all the details of what makes it a balanced price range, but these are all things you absolutely learn and it's not in any other theory or price action, retail. It's all, nothing like this exists, okay, anywhere else up 
side of what I teach. The algorithm is not going to go higher than this high here once we break down and create a fair value gap. Fair value gap is a small little area where markets trade in an imbalance. And this happens to be a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. It's not meant for you to understand every bit of it. I'm just giving you, these are all terms. These are all things that's going on here after the turn. Okay. So all of this move here, all this move here where it rallies up and smart money reversal, low risk sell, low risk sell, redistribution, and trades down to the original consolidation. Remember that fractal I showed you was market maker sell model. The original consolidation is the target. So all of this here, Buyers are being forced to buy at a higher price, and it keeps going higher, buying, 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 buying. So what's going on? They're buying, either being squeezed out of their shorts or buying it with the expectation it's going to keep going higher. Then it hits this area here, and we have capitulation, where all this is just obvious, and this is where everybody falls in love on social media and thinks that euro is now a good time to buy. So they start chasing it there. So there's more people coming in. That's why they hold it here. The algorithm stays in this area. Now, before the markets transitioned into an electronic format where really nobody manually does too much anymore, but they, it does sometimes occur, the actual market makers that would reprice the currencies, that used to be a group of men that would do it, uh, they would hold price just like you see it here. And it would be in a defined range. And that range is defined by that order block. Now, the order block isn't what... I was trained. Order block is a theory that I coined that was very, very close to what I learned about how the central banks price in and book these currencies. There is no, I know you're, you're going to be wanting to send me emails and such. You know, where did you learn this at? What book did you learn it from? Who's the person that taught you? Blah, blah, blah. The, none of that stuff is, it, it's not open public information. I have made it public information as close as I can. But there's a threshold I can't cross. Just like my students have a NDA, most of them uphold to it, but there's been a few of them that haven't. And, and you know, you're know, you always going to have that. And there's consequences that come with that. And I don't want to cross the line that has been set for me too. So I get warned a lot. Okay, I get warned a lot and I know how far I can go. So the things that I have shared and the things I haven't taught yet are as far as I'm going to go because you're just not supposed to know these things. And if that sounds like a tinfoil hat conspiracy and you want to turn the video off, I understand. Take care. Good luck. Good trading. But that's just the honesty. When you look at price, when it trades above this old high and it floods the market with buy side liquidity and smart money's wanting to go short, also count every time that the market was offered here in Large traders, not just every retail trader out there, but large traders may be going into the marketplace, you know, going long here too. So at those times when the market is being offered and on a large side or, or size of um, position, the bank will assume that risk. Now, it doesn't always do it, but generally it will do it when it, it's opportunity for them to make money. Now, you're probably saying, oh, central banks don't do that. Now, well, listen. You don't know what you're talking about. I do. And I prove this every single week. Every instance where they were counterparty to anyone that was buying here, because to be a buyer, you have to have someone sell it to you. So who's selling it to them? Who's selling it all this rally up? The bank. So every time they're offering the liquidity to do that, those positions are underwater just for a short period of time. When those positions become net positive over here. They're aiming to get out here. So there is a core position in here that will be basically mark to market at no profit, no loss at some point when it gets over here. Over here, they're going to they're going to attack the original buyers over here. So all this buying, all the buyers in here, their counterparty is the bank. That bank will get its money back and then profit when it goes down to here. Every position that they offered sell side liquidity to here and all through here, they matched up with the buyers. This flood of buy stops that gets purged, this purging of that buy side liquidity becomes a massive short position that, yes, they took on position risk here by offering counterparty sell side liquidity to buyers. 
It's not buying pressure. Again, it's not buying pressure. They were in control of price the entire time it was going up. That's sell-side delivery. Sell-side delivery repricing model that takes out buy-side liquidity. Guess what? You just learned the real things that comes from the central banks. Those words, they're the real things. You don't want to hear those things, though. You want to hear bullish divergence, MACD crossovers, and harmonic bat patterns. Because that sounds cool. <laughs> it's the boring truth. That's how these markets work. Okay? So the sell-side liquidity that's matched that with the buy-side liquidity being purged here, that position overtakes any of the short-term adversities they assumed here and all of this model going lower and repricing below the original consolidation that is my market maker sell model that's how markets book that's the fractal that unfolds all time frames all the time and depending upon what type of trader you are you could be a buyer here and you sell out here and that's your trade that's your model or you can look at this area here and sell short and say okay once it gets below this first swing low here i'm out there and i'm going to miss all this move or i'm going to wait for this move here which is what this is the easiest last ditch opportunity to go short now it's going to look like all this stuff was this hindsight you know i'm making it work right now and this level offered no real visibility prior to it actually falling down okay i'm going to actually go into my mentorship forum click on a video that i did on the 19th of august 2020 and i'm going to scrub over to the part where i talk about how it's going to go right below here okay so i'm not going to play the whole video but i'm going to show you and my mentorship students they all know that it's in there too they can go to that seven minute mark in three seconds and it'll, you'll see it's right there I actually outlined some of the scenarios that would uh, lead to a shorting opportunity that would go here. Okay, so while I'm not a signal service, I'm not holding your hand saying buy here, sell here, put your stop here. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I do it once in a while for exercises and, and for homework for individuals that are in my group that want to practice a specific way of trading. We were bullish. I said the first half of this past week on the previous Friday – I said that we would go up, we would run this area here, and we would be bullish for the first half of the week. And then once I got that, I took off Thursday. I didn't worry about doing it. You guys didn't hear from me. I was nursing my shoulder and my back and just relaxed. And Thursday was an ugly day. And then Friday, we went right up to the level I outlined on my Wednesday midweek review. So, again, I, I can forecast this stuff and using all the things that I'm showing you here. But none of these things are Wyckoff. This last candle right here, let me take this off. Actually, let's change it to a, a different color. All right, you see that green candle right here? That is a bearish order block. It's part of the buy side of the curve. The curve is the highest point of a market maker sell model or the lowest point in a market maker buy model. So when you put that vertical line on there and you delineate that on a market maker sell model everything to the left of the curve is all buy side oriented the counterparty in other words you have to think like the, the the bank all of this on the buy side of the curve is them offering sell side liquidity to buyers everything to the right of the curve on a sell side delivery is them buying it back so anything that's going down the central bank's buying back, but it has to happen at specific levels, and they're going to add to new shorts when it goes to other levels. Everything on the curve on the left side has to match up on the right. Guess what? You don't see that on Wyckoff either. You don't see that anywhere else. Everything that goes on over here as a buy becomes a sell over here. Oh, that's standard support and resistance. Oh, that's a flip zone. That's a so-and-so and this. And no, it's not. Not to the point of every single Tip is being identical everything lines up perfectly and here's the rub all of this occurs based on time and price so i know the level that i'm looking for but i also know the day and the time it's going to occur because the algorithm is programmed to do that all of this delivery of price happens based on a time and price algorithm that is ipta the interbank price delivery algorithm it is a real thing, folks, whether you want to believe it or not, it is, okay? And the bottom line is this. It's programmed in such a way that it repeats over and over again these specific macros. Now, a macro is a short list of operations that go into um, 
operation when a specific set of criteria is met or if a specific criteria is changed manually or based on a economic driver that may be coming out on the calendar it will cause changes and the algorithm will change gears and go a different direction or operate in a different manner but a macro is like this okay when the market trades up hits this last up close candle here that is not a supply and demand zone okay it's not a harmonic pattern it's not a um a myriad of other things that could if you just looked at this box or looked at the uh, element of using a fib later on top of it oh it's this it's that the times this is one of the biggest discoveries i had the times that i found that my retail ideas because i started as a retail, tr retail trader too folks I, I learned all the stuff that you're bogged down with too indicators moving averages um <laughs> whatever it is okay I've done all that point and figure charts. You don't hear much about that anymore, but uh, back in the days, that's, that was a thing, but uh, I never figured out how to use them, but I'm sure there's books out there that says this is how you do it, but it never worked for me. But when I discovered how these markets are really booking price, when that happened, I could see when retail ideas would work. And I could also see when they're going to fail. And I discovered that when these environments create the opportunity for the retail ideas to be very clear in their perception of what price may do and then I have the real x-ray view of what the market's really going to do that's the trades I really want to load up on because they are the ones that just take everybody surprise because nothing really lines up in their school of thought and now think about it like this does Elliott Wave supply and demand um, wike off Dow theory, do all of those agree at all times? No. Don't take my word for it. Go and start doing a case study on it. And you'll see one theory looks like it's working one time. Another theory or two may be working in conjunction or it looks like it's working. And in other, other times, none of those things are working, but the market's doing some big moves. What's occurring? So the question always was, and I pose this all the time on Twitter, which theory of market driver is, is really pushing the market around this week is it harmonic pattern is it elliott wave is it supply and demand so the the real joke is you have to figure out not only what direction the market's going to go but what school of thought it's going to follow if it's retail logic that you know, moves and pulls price around and then when you take a step back and say okay all of that is not it's nonsense all of it is indicators all that stuff is just garbage and that's what makes me controversial because I'm here not with the will to to be adversarial. I'm not trying to be ad adversarial, okay? I want to open your eyes to what is really going on. And the only way I do this in history was to piss people off. People went into my stuff thinking, okay, I'm going to prove that this guy doesn't always talk about it. I'm going to put my school of thought up against it. And then all of a sudden, they're converted. Because once they see the data... Once they see it, and they are forced to contend with it, they don't have to believe in me. They have to believe the data. And the data says retail is lost. They're doing things in the fog. They have no idea that they're confused. They have no idea what they're doing. They put so much faith into these instruments, in these mathematically derived calculations that have no bearing whatsoever on what the central bank's going to do about price. Now, it's not limited to central banks and currencies. The same stuff occurs in the commodity market, occurs in stocks, and I think eventually will be the underlying drivers also in crypto markets. There's signatures that come in play once in a while with crypto, but the reason why I don't touch it is because it doesn't have the consistency, whereas Forex, I know this thing like a Swiss timepiece. And it sounds arrogant to say stuff like that and hear it. It's just the truth, folks. You know, the, the first thing that comes to mind is if you knew all this, why aren't you a billionaire? You know, Why aren't you the richest person in the world? Why aren't you this and why aren't you do that? I have a lot of limitations placed on me that you aren't going to know about. So I operate in the limitations that 
I have. And I go as far as I can. And in the past, I've, just, I've tried to stretch them and I got smacked. <laughs> okay. So I do as much as I possibly can. And when I get warned, then I just dial it back. But the point is this. When you start studying price and you start looking for the curve, which is the highest point in the cell model, everything to the left has to match up on the right-hand side. Okay. When we look at a brief discussion of Wyckoff, you're going to see none of these things over here are described in Wyckoff. Now, he'll talk about, in his, in his theory, we'll mention like uh, uh, last point of supply or something to that effect. And it's always something that happened that's explained. Now, when I teach imbalances and I teach fair value gaps and I teach institutional order flow entry drills and I teach breakers, when I teach order blocks, the mean threshold, which is the midpoint of an order block, or consequent encroachment, which is the midpoint of a gap, those things, okay, are very specific. They don't always exist in the price action, but the ones that do, that's your signature. So it's not a it's not contrived hindsight lipstick that finds its way into an example that makes me look smart on YouTube. That's not the point here. The point is the things that are here are mine. And they're not logic that's leaning on any other thing, specifically in this discussion, Wyckoff. Now, there's channels out there that have been crediting I Am Academy and I Markets Live. And they are busy right now still hawking my concepts. And for the most part, haven't even really changed the names. So they're in trouble. <laughs> they don't realize how much trouble they're in, but they are in some trouble. But they don't even teach it right. Okay, so at some point, you know, people looking at that, and if they end up coming to my channel late, okay, maybe they were introduced to those clowns first, and then they came here. Oh, you're trading like so-and-so. No, I'm trading the way I trade, and everybody else has learned this from me. You may not have learned it directly from my video. You probably had someone else pair it what I've seen in my examples and trades and I show why I did what I did and then they make a video a day later saying this is what I did and this is the trade I took but they don't have any stats showing it that's what I'm saying you have to ask these people to step forward and say hey look I don't need to see a MyFX book because I personally don't care about a MyFX book I want someone to show me executions and it doesn't have to be a live account do it on a demo do it on this paper trading application on TradingView but why won't they do it because they cannot they can only dress the chart up in hindsight, which leads me to where we are right now. When we look at the sell side of the curve on a market maker sell model, okay, everything over here, like this area here, all these down close candles, that was smart money buying. Then when they reprice down like that, they're accumulating long positions. They're going to take some and offset that up here. They know where the price is going to go because they're in control of the price. How do I know they're in control of the price? The same reason why I said in March that they were going to take price up here eventually. At what point in time in March, I didn't know that. But as we got closer and closer to August, I knew exactly when it was going to happen. And it was the previous Friday, I said to my group, the first half of the week, we're bullish and we're going to see price go above here and dollars going to go down to the level I said it was going to go to. And it did both. And cable did the same thing. Now, when you're outside the loop or your first time here or if you're just a very cynical person you hear that and say oh yeah okay there's no proof there's no there's no substance to that except for your word how should i just take that word and and trust it okay we'll keep that in mind the bearish order block when price trades down 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 and then rams right back up into the august 17th low it hits the order block here doesn't go any higher than that and at 1 o'clock in the morning, Friday, August 21st, the market creates the high of the day. Then reprices aggressively below here. What's below here? Sell side liquidity, just like this. So the positions that they sold short and acting as counterparty here, and when they flooded the market with buy side liquidity, all these buy stops became a massive, big opportunity to match up shorts. And you would get easily in the marketplace at high prices. They're taking some partials off here. They're offsetting that. So what's their profit when it gets to this candle here? All the selling they did here and all the selling they did in here. They're not going to get it all off. 
because there's been a lot of buying that's been taking place in here, but that's not the catalyst that lent price up here. It's this liquidity that they drew up on. That's where the market's going to go. When the market starts to reprice lower, when it goes below this low here, that area of sell stops or sell side liquidity is perfect for them to do what? To buy it back, to get out of their shorts. So how do you have a ideal scenario if you're short to get out, you have to buy it, but what's the ideal scenario? It's buying at a lower price than you got in it. Well, what better place is to buy below an old low? And that's what's occurring here. Then price expands lower and reaches down into equilibrium. All this consolidation, equilibrium, and below the original consolidation, which is the original draw on liquidity that started all this market maker sell model. That's not Wyckoff, folks. As much as you want to do acrobatics to try to twist it around, you young men, it's not. And anyone that spends any time, please, if you doubt me, study Wyckoff. Then come back to this YouTube channel and look at my things. And there's absolutely nothing, nothing here that lines up with Wyckoff. Zero. Zilch, nada, doesn't exist. So let's go over to the internet real quick. All right, so here's the, uh, the channel that guys like to go to and try to make a case that ICT is Wyckoff ripoff. <laughs> this is the gentleman, Richard Wyckoff, rest in peace. But uh, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to the man, even though I was as a younger man. Um, I'm not trying to do that here. I do believe that, just like I've said this in the past, I said that people that trade supply and demand or learn how to trade with supply and demand, it is a good starting point. Okay, Wyckoff introduces some theory, but those theories are flawed because it's based on buying and selling pressure Okay, or volume in the sense that the way he's introducing volume here i don't subscribe to that okay and you're really not going to get a true volume depiction in the foreign exchange market anyway because you're just not going to see all the volume so you can't really attribute your success in trying to repackage my stuff with wyckoff because it's very dependent on volume so anyway let's go through here real quick and i'll get to the nuts and bolts all this stuff here read it yourself if you're really interested in trying to figure out if i'm lying to you Okay, and here's one of the things that everybody says. Oh, see, this is that market maker sell model. Okay, do you see this going down below the original consolidation? No, it doesn't happen. Even if you look at the other schematics, that, even if you look at Richard Wyckoff's writings where he has a, another markup phase and markdown phase, it shows it stopping above this area too. Okay, so no matter what uh, schematic you use, okay, when you're looking at Wyckoff, you never see my market maker sell model or market maker buy model it's always just this incomplete view now this in itself okay doesn't really say anything because if you look at swing trading okay swing trading the, the expectation is if you want to sell short you're expecting a swing to go up first and then you swing down that's swing trading i mean everybody knows that higher highs higher lows lower highs lower lows Okay, all those ideas, they're pretty much generic concepts. I'm not trying to claim authorship there, but when I'm breaking down the individual move up and then when it comes down, it takes this area out, where he has accumulation area written here, that's where my target is on a market maker sell model. You don't see that in Wyckoff. You can do all the acrobatics you want, young men. It's not there. Find any book, and I got 30 books on Wyckoff, 30 and none of them show what I'm doing. So I'm sure there's been more Wyckoff books because everybody's out there trying to talk about something like they recreated something. The Wyckoff book is not going to find, you're not going to find my concepts in there. Not renamed, not, uh, you know, masked, okay, hidden. It, it's obvious that they're completely two different ideas and mine is superior. Keep on going down a little bit, okay? And we're going to look at this. This is the accumulation schematic of Wyckoff, okay? I, I guess what they're saying is, is this would be like the market maker buy model. And again, none of this stuff is even in my concepts. None of this. All this stuff is garbage to me. Now, I don't mean to, just, to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to, you know, turn you people off that are trading like Wyckoff, okay? I'm arguing with the young men that are out there trying to save their own necks trying to say and try to put down foundation that they have been teaching Wyckoff and not ICT mentorship stuff. 
or even YouTube stuff. But if you are a Wyckoff trader, like I said, and I want you to make sure, in case you missed it earlier, if you are a Wyckoff trader and are profitable, I promise you, if you study the things I have on this YouTube channel, it will make it even clearer for you. And you might even learn to dismiss it and go deeper into the things I'm talking about because what I'm talking about is actual markets booking to the price level. Like It doesn't go much beyond or fall short of it. It's like right to the point. Wyckoff doesn't have that. It's just very vague things like this, okay? And this is not the market maker buy model, okay? And since the discussion was really with an example on the euro dollar, that would be a market maker sell model. And you can see last point of support. These are all references that happen after they happen. In other words, they're referring to something that took place. Whereas in my concepts, we're anticipating something. We're anticipating a fair value gap. We're anticipating an institutional order flow entry drill. We're anticipating a breaker. We're anticipating an order block trading too. Okay, there is the number one stark contrast. Okay, I am anticipating and I'm teaching my students to anticipate specific elements in price that are highly, highly precise. There is no ambiguity. We know exactly what we're looking for. We know when it will occur and we know how it looks. And we know that because of example after example after example. And it repeats itself and it matches the other side of the curve. Now, that's all I'm going to say on it, but everyone that studies with me, all of that stuff is explained in great detail. And it absolutely is, it, there's nothing like it anywhere else. All right, here's a accumulation schematic number two. Same thing. This is not a market maker buy model. Nothing in here has any element whatsoever. See, the thing is with Wyckoff, they like to say uh, the Judas swing that I teach, that's the, sp the, 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 the spring or the, um, I may say this wrong. Uh, break the ice or crack the ice or jump the creek or something like that. Um, like I said, I'm not a student of Wyckoff, okay? I just know that I made fun of them, uh, a man when I was in my 20s on America Online that he was teaching with it. And he was finding some trades, but I didn't like where he was entering. And it just didn't make any sense to me. But he didn't have barn burner type results, but he was showing profitability. I found out later on, and it was actually watching... Uh, Larry Williams video course. It was four v VHS tapes. And the name of, I sometimes butcher this up, but it is the Futures Millionaire Confidential Trading Course by Larry Williams. Okay. It's really hard to get, but you can find it once in a while on eBay. Uh, I really wish he had a digital version of it because I don't have access to the third video. Uh, the VHS tape wore out because when I was a young man, I, I watched it multiple times a week. And I could tell you verbatim what he was going to say before he said it. I was a fanboy, and I, at heart, I still am. He was my original mentor. I never met the man in my life. I never had the opportunity to do that. I would love to be able to do that. Larry, if you're listening, I, I absolutely I, I wish I had the opportunity to meet you one time. But my understanding didn't begin until him. Now, even with that said, there isn't a lot of things that Larry's work can be seen with my uh, concepts, except for market structure. Market structure um, is absolutely his i learned that from him um and i always credit that but the majority of everything else you know his um ideas of uh, relative strength analysis i got that from his uh, 1970 book how i made a million dollars trading commodities and he talked a little bit about that same concept in that vhs course too so anyway with all that said i found the pattern or the fractal of the market maker sell model in a segment of that course he was using an overhead projector as he was talking about his uh, concepts he was teaching in that course. And the chart that was on the screen, I was like, I see that pattern all the time. And it just, it was highly structured. And I was like, okay, I'm going to start looking for that. And then with that, and the two gentlemen that I met in the 90s that watched me run up a lot of uh, accounts on America Online, they thought I had av availed myself the information that they had. The things that I know now, when I really didn't, I just was getting extremely lucky buying when markets were going up and over leveraging, really over leveraging to the hilt where just one trade would have wiped me out completely and destroyed me. And it was a, it was just plain luck. It was just luck. But at the time, if you were watching me, like I was the poster boy for Instagram back then in the 90s. And of course, Instagram didn't 
exist back then. But I had the personality that everybody would have flocked to. And I was showing my cars. I was showing my money. Anytime I went out and bought something, I was showing it. It was just like I had everybody wanting me to do that. And I didn't believe it until I started doing it. So it was one of those things where not only did I want other people to believe I was successful, but I needed to have them respond because it felt like a dream to me. I never had that kind of money come into my hands ever before. And it was wildly successful. But at the time, I thought it was skill. It was not skill. It was not. Okay, I can tell you in all honesty, I was getting lucky for nine months. So believe me, lucky streaks do exist with idiots. And I was an absolute goober in the 90s. I had no idea what I was doing. But if you listen to me talk, I could sell the idea like I was the greatest Instagrammer that ever would have existed. And believe me, people were flocking to me. And I, I garnered a lot of attention. And I garnered the attention of... Uh, the watch groups and because I never put a disclaimer up ever that's why I have these long boring disclaimers in the beginning of my videos because I learned that painful lesson in the 90s where I got a subpoena sent to me and the Commodity Future Training Commission said hey um, we need to talk to you <laughs> and I later found out that uh, it's because I didn't put a risk disclaimer up at all I was I didn't post anything that caused anyone to lose any money because I was posting the trades I was getting ready to take and they were winning but the problem with that is that I did not disclose the underlying risk. And I was young. I didn't know what I was doing. And here's the problem. A lot of you guys on YouTube that are parroting me, you have no idea the level of trouble you can find yourself in because you don't even, some of you just get on there and say, yeah, I'm not a licensed trade advisor. Um, don't take any uh, advice from me. And you think that's going to protect you. It isn't. You have to have specific uh, disclosures of, of risk that are government mandated. You have to do these things or you're looking at potentially years in jail. Huge fines, $500,000 and five years in prison. Look, having significance and feeling good about yourself and feeling like you've arrived and have other people believe in you, even when it's not real, it ain't worth that type of punishment. Five years in prison, imagine that. Because that's what you could, lend, you could end up in something like that. Trying to be something you're really not. Okay, that's why I stay in paper trading and demo when I'm teaching, because there's no way you're going to misinterpret what I'm saying. You're going to never look at me showing you a trade and say, he did that with live funds. Let me be enticed to go and do the same thing. At best, you're going to be enticed to go into a demo account and try to replicate it. And guess what? You can't lose your house with a demo account. You can't pay for groceries with a demo account, but you can't lose anything monetary with a demo. So... That's the number one reason why people have a, a, an issue with me because I'm not going to extend my neck on the block so that way I'm going to take on personal risk because I'm not going to do that. I know the laws, okay? I'm not going to I'm not going to cross them. So anyway, I think there's one more slide maybe. There we are. So here's the market uh, schematic for the Wyckoff distribution scheme, okay? Or schematic rather. Now, just because it goes up and then goes down, it seems like, oh, that's the perfect excuse. So we can now say that we learned it from here and not ICT. Okay. Uh, nothing in here talks about a breaker. Nothing in here talks about a fair value gap where it says last point of supply. What is this? Prime uh, Preliminary supply. PSY. PSY is over here. Okay, great. To me, that doesn't mean anything at all. And nothing in my mentorship talks about that. What's the LPSY? Mm, let's scroll up down here. Last point of supply. After testing support on a SOW, sign of weakness, a feeble rally on narrow spread shows that the market is having considerable difficulty advancing. This inability to rally may be due to weak demand, substantial supply, or both. Last point of supply represent exhaustion of demand and the last waves of large operators distribution before markdown begins in earnest. Okay. Again, that is clearly an observation after the fact. What are the, what are you doing in, in the activation of seeing that in a chart? In other words, what is that instigating you to do as a trader using Wyckoff? Nothing. You're not doing anything here, but that right there is a fair value gap. Or an institutional order flow entry drill short entry for me. 
all this is the reference point after it happens in Wyckoff. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? There are elements. I, I don't care about looking at something after the fact. Okay, if I can't make money with it, it's of no use to me. A fair value gap is something that's in the chart when it fills or even partially fills. That's an entry for me. An institutional order flow entry drill is something that's meaningful to me. It's not something I'm going to highlight on my chart after it happens. I can't make money on that. So what difference does it make with all this stuff in here? They're not taking trades there. Nobody's taking trades on that. It's just highlighting the overall likelihood that this might go lower. I already know it's going lower before it gets up to there. I know about it months before it happens. I know it's likely to occur, but I won't so short until it gives me the specific signatures. And a few of them I've already highlighted with the euro. Now, all of this in here still doesn't say it goes down below the original consolidation. Notice that? See that? It's absent because it's not in white golf, kids. Okay? Now, let's go over to my forum. All right, so you go into the ICD mentorship. Now, this is not a plug, okay? This is just to show you that I talk about this stuff before it happens. If you go to August, and we'll go down to the last one here. I haven't done this weekend's review and commentary yet. So the last one is in Wednesday, August 19th, which is my midweek review. If you click on that, and I'll scribble on over to the seven minute mark. And right there. Or moment say this is going to go lower and attack the south side liquidity resting. Listen now, resting below these lows. Below here. See that? Now, is this not the euro? It's the euro. And all this idea right here, I'm drawing your attention right there. That's not Wyckoff. That's my market maker sell model. All of this liquidity, where is it resting at? 1780 to 1760. Right below these lows here. Now, think. Is it still an argument that I'm reteaching Wyckoff with different names and trying to look good and smart, but it's somebody else's stuff? Listen, folks, okay? There's only one other person in Forex that I have ever told anyone to go and listen to and make them a mentor. That's Chris Laurie. This same kind of stuff came up when I was doing things on baby pips. Okay. Um, I did videos over there and I had people that were in Chris Laurie's group over there say, Hey, look, you know, why don't we have our own version of pro traders club? So honestly, in hindsight, looking back, it was probably one of the worst things I've ever done because it looks at face value, like I'm teaching what he was doing in his Pro Traders Club, because he still has that, if I'm not mistaken, I think he still has it. But he was, at least at that time, he was doing um, a service where it was called Pro Traders Club. But nonetheless, I don't believe in Wyckoff, okay? Um, I believe that Larry Williams' stuff, the original stuff, not his new stuff. I haven't looked at his new stuff to be able to say yes or no, but his old stuff still works today. Okay, if you're Forex focused, if you don't like me, go to Chris Laurie. I have many of his students in my group, okay, and they will all say the same thing that I'm going to tell you right now. I do not teach what Chris Laurie teaches. There's nothing similar to what I'm doing to what he teaches. Now, you're welcome to go and learn from him. Okay, I believe he's a real genuine gentleman and he wants his students to do well. He's not a flashy flash guy. He's really down to earth. And I think that if you put a lot of work with him, you'll learn. You won't learn the things I'm teaching, but you'll learn things that I have a respect for because he teaches a lot of things that are very, very close to the bottom rung of what I introduce. But there is a totally different light year jump ahead. And again, it's not a I'm better than. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to be very careful what I say here because I have respect for Chris Laurie and he knows me. Okay, he knows enough to at least invite me into his 
uh, forum and asked me to consult on how I could advise them how to streamline it. And that's the extent of it. That's it. I, I have not been formally taught by Chris Laurie. I've not had any kind of uh, you know, tutelage under him except for test driving his he, he freely gave it to me and, and said, look, you know, take a look at what you think. And you are welcome. You're absolutely welcome to go over there and ask him. Um, when people mentioned him on Baby Pips, I signed up. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I was there for two months. And he would validate that too. Um, but I didn't I didn't take anything from that man. Okay, I didn't take anything. I didn't repackage any of that stuff. He doesn't even probably know what a uh, market maker sell model or buy model is okay but he trades in a very similar fashion okay but i think personally he trades a little bit closer to wyckoff than i really do and again i'm basically beating up wyckoff only because it's comparing it to what i trade with and it, again i'm not trying to create that that team idea because i was pro larry williams when i first started and i had closed my mind to everything everything else and in a lot of ways it helped, but in a lot of ways it hurt me because it made me feel like I was better than I really was. And listen, I'm wise enough now to be, like I said, almost 50 years old. I know that unless you see it yourself, you're not going to believe it. So I don't hide from anything. I, I come out here and I tell you what it is. I'm not worried about what anybody else's opinion is. And I'm not worried about what people can do or what they think they can do. I can out-trade everybody out here, period. End of story, done. I'm ready to prove it. It never gets taken. When I tell you to go look at Chris Laurie, if I tell you to go study Wyckoff, and tell, tell me after you've done that, if you think that you clearly see me doing these things, no one has ever done that and came back and said, yeah, you know, it, you're doing it. They've always said, yeah, there's nothing, not like, nothing like that. Students that are under Chris Laurie right now, they are in my group too. And they always send me emails. Why do you keep harping about that? There's nothing you're doing that Chris is teaching or even taught. And the same thing. I want you to, if I was doing these very things, okay? If I was reteaching and renaming and rehashing things that other people do, why the hell would I tell you to go and study them? Think about that. Think about the logic of that. <laughs> When I was on Baby Pips, I said, hey, look, you know, if you're looking for some money outside of me and you want to learn Forex price action stuff, you know, Chris Laurie's got a good program going. Done. I spent two months there and I said, you know what? What you're doing is good. And we had a lot of conversations and we were going to do a, a, a seminar, but because of my personality, it brought a lot of, uh, like I said, I'm very controversial. I'm not a team player. Okay. Obviously, you can hear it in my voice and the things I say. Listen, I'm not, I'm not looking for a team, okay? I am my own team, and I don't like losing. I like winning, and I don't want to waste my time with things that aren't going to make money, period. If it can't be used to make money, then you shouldn't be bothering with it. And I believe wholeheartedly that if you trained under Chris Laurie, you will find a profitable way of trading. How long will it take? I don't know. Can you do that with me? Yes, I believe that too. Can you do it with Wyckoff? I know people that trade with Wyckoff and they're profitable. But when I sat down with them and I showed you like the, some of the things I showed you in this video here, it made them appreciate the things that are not known widely in the universe of trading. It just, they don't, first of all, you're not going to hear someone get up on a stage in front of people and say, um, the markets are absolutely rigged. The previous day's data will give you the information that causes the calculations to the pip that the previous day gives you the next day's high and low before it forms and it's compiled at midnight new york time if someone sat there and got on cnbc okay and said okay listen um just so you have your heads up uh, the central banks peg their daily highs and lows at midnight new york time and they do this every single day for every currency and you can follow this and know what it's going to do within five pips variance. How much attention do you think that would garner? A lot. And I've been saying this since 1996. And I have not, I've never ever advertised. I've never advertised. I've never put an ad on Facebook. I've never put an ad on YouTube. I've never advertised anything except for 
one classify ad that I put on Rob Report and one Wall Street Journal ad. That's it. That's it. That's all I ever did. And most of everything else was people seeing me, finding me. Because it's very hard to manage all of you. There's a lot of you. And so many different personalities, so many team mentality, and it's mostly the younger people, the, the, the millennials. They come in contact with me and they think, wow, I'm going to take this guy's stuff and I'm going to repackage it and I'm going to get so rich and I'm going to do this and I don't need to ever trade. Let me tell you something. I have made so much money trading the paper trades and the demo trades in this mentorship that I would never need ever to trade another live account ever. Let that sink in. And knowing that, okay, I want you to understand that I'm not doing it to brag. I'm telling you why it's important to listen to someone like me. I'm not motivated by image. I have nice cars. I have nice homes. I have nice everything. And that's not why you should be doing this. Because if you're listening to someone and they're flashing cars that they don't own, you know, in, in locations that they don't live in, these are all just destinations they got to because they sold something. And it's not a profitable position. They sold, you know, information that generally isn't theirs. And they're flying around on airplanes that they didn't pay for that ticket with trading profits. So I've never wanted to go that route. Never. I never want to go there. I knew if I walked in here in the foreign exchange universe like Mike Tyson, no flash. I walk out here with a towel over my shoulders, no socks. I'm not trying to flash anything. And I go out here and I knock out these markets and anybody else that's willing to compare themselves with me. I'm not interested in all that image stuff. I'm interested in making an impact on your life. Because that's what I promised. If it was given to me, then I would spend the rest of my life teaching it. And I do. Yes, there's things that I sell that are going to be only in mentorship. Do you need that to be profitable? Absolutely not. You don't ever need to buy my mentorship. You don't ever need to buy another person's course. If you don't find profitability in my YouTube channel's lessons, then trading is not for you. Think about what I just said there. If you go out and you buy another person's course and you have not gone through this YouTube channel in its entirety, you're a fool. Because I'm going to tell you something. There has never been anyone that comes to this YouTube channel and says, I wasted my time there. The only complaint you're going to get, like with this video, I talk too much. You know, I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm not demonstrating toys. I'm talking to you. I'm trying to make a connection with you because I'm telling you, I wish, I wish to God almighty that I had this when I was coming up. I am a real person. I have made millions of dollars. I have done things stupid and lost tons doing stupid things. Everyone knows me as the demo baller and you all understand why. Because I'm not going to take on that liability. I'm not licensed. And these young people that talk all that smack saying, oh yeah, if he was this, he was that. Listen, there's a World Cup trading contest that's sitting right there every year. Put yourself in the leader spot. Call me out and I'll take your spot in one week. And that's as plain as I can make it for you. I'm going to give you more insights in institutional trading and smart money concepts, and I'm going to give you with examples and executions. Um, it's not just always pointing to something after the fact. I can do that, and you can learn from that, but it's better when you can get it proven to you, when it's shown to you in detail. And my, my goal is for you to, number one, feel confident that you're in the right place. Listen, did it cost you any money to click this play button? No. Maybe you feel like I've talked too much and maybe I didn't say enough that what you wanted me to cover. I've said it all already in the YouTube videos. You're looking for that five minute trainer that says, this is what you do every single day. That doesn't exist, folks. It doesn't exist because there's a lot of those five minute trainer type videos on YouTube where the kids sit on there and they say, I took a trade over here. You didn't learn anything from that and he didn't even show you. Or she didn't show you 
an execution. Where's the proof that you took it? Even in a demo, show me your point of entry. Show me how you manage your stop. 99% of the time, these people aren't even using stop losses. So if you're not sharing a stop loss location, you didn't take a trade. You didn't take that. And that's exactly what you see on social media today. You see everybody wanting to show their entry and where the market is now. You know what that trade is? That's a trade they put on three or four days ago, maybe even a month ago. And now it looks like it's profitable. And they're in such a hurry to show it to you because they're thinking that the trade's going to move to an unprofitable state. They hurry up and share that screenshot on social media. And everybody says, wow, look at that. There's no stop loss on it. There's a guy over there on Instagram that made a name for himself doing all that stuff. No stop loss whatsoever. And he was unwilling to show that he could do anything close to what I do. Come on, Sean. Still available. <laughs> Anyway, I want you to think about what I showed you today. I want you to investigate it yourself. Don't take my word for it. Dig into this YouTube channel and then dig into Wyckoff. And you tell me, okay, if you see the similarity anywhere because this doesn't exist. It's void of anything Wyckoff. Nothing. Nothing there, folks. And I've said this all along. I've said it numerous times over the last 10 years. All you have to do is investigate the things I'm sharing publicly. And if you do that, that's the testimony that stands the test of time. Like I said, I could do this in front of a court of law. Period. End of story. Everybody else? Mm -mm. They ain't going to do that. Because they can't, number one. Two, they don't know what they're doing. I know how to do this. I can do this. I do do this. And I can teach it to you too. Will you be perfect? Will you lose money if you trade with live funds? Yes, you will lose money. Will you be perfect? No, you won't be. I'm not perfect. I know where I'm going to be wrong, most likely. And I try to avoid those environments. I've learned over the last 27 years the things that will lead to high probability and I also know the things that I like to see in price action. There's a lot of patterns I know and scenarios that may unfold a specific way. But I don't have an affinity for them. But I teach them because I know enough about human psychology that there may be a large degree of the, the viewership here that may like to do those very setups. Just because it doesn't resonate with me doesn't mean it won't resonate with you. So I try not to press everybody into a specific mold because I don't think that works. Um, it didn't work with me, obviously. I tried to be a duplicate of Larry Williams. And get it. I, I get it. Listen. Everything that you guys hear me talk about, it's so different. It's so powerful. It's precise. It's just unbelievable. And I know. I get it. And a younger me would have been flattered by all of it. But I can tell you I'm ashamed of what I did on America Online because I was pretending to be equivalent to Larry Williams when I wasn't even close. Like, I didn't know anything. I was just going by what my last few trades were. And they were over leveraged. And many times, I didn't even have a stop loss. <laughs> think. Think about that. That's absurd. It's absurd. And I was carrying it on on America Online like I was some rock star. I was nothing like I am today. Nothing. I respect these markets because they've taken lots of money from me. And I don't like losing. I hate losing. So I've spent my entire life trying to decipher the things that cause me as an individual to get tricked by the marketplace. And there are specific things that these markets do that they are doing by default. It's not like um, they're looking just for your stop or they're looking for this or that. There are specific things that they're just doing that they're programmed to do. And it doesn't sound normal. It sounds like no way this is going to be like this. It's all buying and selling pressure. It, that's the reason why the market's random. I'm going to tell you right now, there ain't nothing random about these markets. There's nothing random. Zero. And if it was all buying and selling pressure, then why is these markets stopping at the pip I'm looking for, turning and going to another level to the pip that I'm looking for every single week? 
Think. Think. How could a, a kitchen sink approach of all these retail theories, how could they all be fighting each other and yet take a step outside of all that stuff and don't, don't refer to any of it, don't look at it, and when there's times when you can use it as an opposing opinion, everything works perfectly like a Swiss timepiece? Folks, listen. That kind of stuff just doesn't happen unless it's programmed to do so. And all of you individuals out there on these team mentalities, oh, I'm team Harmonic, I'm team Elliott Wave, and team Supply and Demand, team White Golf. All of you are fighting each other, trying to be something that your theory isn't never going to deliver. It's never going to deliver like this will. And you all get to test drive it for free. T just listen to me. Go through every video on this YouTube channel. Go through every single one of them. Take copious notes. And I promise you, I guarantee you, you are going to learn more here than you will learn anywhere else. Bar none. And you're going to see and understand more about price action than you ever would learn from any course, any book, any author, any educator, any mentor. None. Period. And with that, I'm going to close this one and I'll talk to you next week. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Good luck and good trading.